guys, so slightly less formal video today because I just don't have a lot of time this week. I'm very busy, so, but I really wanted to make sure I got this up either hopefully this Friday the 30th, but possibly it will be Monday the 2nd of November, I believe. But if you're watching this, you already know what day I ended up getting it up. But today I want to go over my November TBR. Usually I would right now be doing my Bogopoly TBR for November and December, my final one of the year. If you've been watching my channel, you know about that. If you haven't, I usually do a Bogopoly TBR game for my TBRs and I do it every two months just because of my personal reading habit and the length of time it takes me to get through that many challenges. It just works better for me to do it every two months. I also am a mood reader, so anyway. But this month I decided to just do a very informal TBR simply because I am currently in school and I really want to try to get through my final papers for the end of the semester, which will end in halfway through December, but I will also have tests at that point. So my plan is to get as many of my papers done in November as possible. I believe I have three that I have to write. So it's very doable, but I do have to do a lot of research for it. And then in December, my last couple weeks of school, I can focus on studying for tests. And so because of that, I just really don't want to overwhelm myself with too much for fun reading goals, if that makes sense. However, don't worry about the Bookopoly TBR situation because I will be doing a Bookopoly TBR for December. I feel like in December, because I'm planning to get all these papers done in November, I'm going to have a lot more time to read in December. So I'm planning on doing just one round just for December and then I will go back to my every other month rounds of Bookopoly TBR. So for this video, I'm just going to be discussing books that have been on my radar that I am kind of in the mood for and I'm not planning on definitely reading all of these. I'm not even planning on definitely reading pretty much any of them. There's a couple that I'll mention first that I am pretty certain I am going to be reading, but the rest are just kind of if I get to them, if I'm still in the mood for them, we'll just kind of see. So Let's kick off with some books that I have currently started at the end of October that will go into November. I'm already reading them, so I know for sure I'm going to be reading them. So first of all, I have here Haldol and Hyacinths, A Bipolar Life by Melody Moesi. This is a mental health memoir following this woman who comes from a Persian background and she also develops bipolar disorder in her life and it just talks about her experience, especially with that different culture element. She is growing up in America. However, she was raised with a background of her parents being from Iran and it just really influenced her experience as well. And so I'm really excited to read this. Technically, I am reading this for one of my papers that I do have for school, so that's why I'm picking it up, but I am excited to read it. And I've, I'm only like 25 pages into it at this point, but I am really enjoying the writing style and am already enjoying it. So anyway, there's that. Okay, and then if you watched my previous Victober vlog, you will know that I was really struggling to figure out what I was in the mood for and I said I probably won't be reading any Victorian literature for the rest of the month beyond what I had already started because I just wasn't in the mood for it. Well, I lied because I figured out what I was in the mood for and it was Thomas Hardy. Are we surprised? And so I ended up picking up A Pair of Blue Eyes by Thomas Hardy. This isn't even the Hardy novel that I was wanting to pick up, but it's the one I ended up picking up. And so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm very not far at all into it, just like 20 pages, but the writing style, Hardy's writing style just always feels like coming home. It has this nice familiar feel while also telling me a new story. So I'm excited to be reading this and will be finishing it hopefully in the next couple weeks. I, again, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time to read this month. That's why I'm doing this so informally. So this may be the only book I end up completing besides like my mental health memoir and some audiobooks, but we'll see how everything goes. I don't know. And then the other book I want to mention that I'm definitely going to get to is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. I am going to be listening to this on audiobook after I finish The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope and I'm really excited to pick it up. For those of you who don't know, this follows a man who was raised 
by this very religious person. I'm not completely sure how the book goes about showing it because I know it's very different from the Disney movie. But he is a hunchback, he rings the bells in Notre Dame, and we also meet Esmeralda, who's this beautiful gypsy woman, and she ends up drawing the attention of both this hunchback as well as his guardian and the this other captain of the guard man and things kind of go on from there i loved the hunt or this is the hunchback of notre dame i loved les miserables by victor hugo a lot it's one of my favorite books of all time i love the disney movie of this and the play musical of this which is much more i've heard like the book so it has that tragic ending that i believe that this one has um, so I just I really love this story already and I don't think I'm going to like this as much as Les Mis just based on things I've heard about it but I am excited to get to it. Okay and now I'm going to quickly run through some books that I may or may not get to. We'll just see what happens this month. The first being The Lost Queen by Signa Pike. This follows the twin sister of the man who would go on to inspire the legend of Merlin and I don't know if it's necessarily a historical fantasy or if it's just historical fiction when I see it in the store in the bookstore it's usually just in the fiction area it's not in the fantasy area so I'm thinking it's just historical fiction but I'm really excited to get to it the second book in this series just came out and I just I really really want to get to this I've had it for a long time and I think I'm going to like it at least I very much hope so next we have fools and mortals by Bernard Cornwell this is another historical fiction following the brother of Shakespeare which I'm really excited to get to whenever I can we'll see if I end up in the mood for it then we have a third historical fiction I just love my historical fiction but anyway we have here Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. I've wanted to get to this for ages and this might finally be the time to do it. I am in the mood for all of these, but I think this one might be the one I lean towards most right now if I were done with a pair of blue eyes right at this moment. However, once I finish a pair of blue eyes, we'll see what I'm in the mood for, so. But this one is very high on my priority list, so I hope to get to it before the end of the year. Oh, and I guess I should tell you what this is about. This fall follows Thomas Cromwell who is an advisor to King Henry VIII and it's a trilogy it's the first in a trilogy about him and his influence part of which had to do with getting Anne Boleyn on the throne as well as getting her off so kind of interesting very excited to read that whenever I get to it like this is probably one of the books I'm most excited to get to then we have another historical fiction but it's a little bit more like historical fiction magical realism there's kind of a different element to it whereas those three were all kind of medieval renaissance type historical fiction this is I believe like 1800s but I'm not completely sure anyway it's Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield I love the 13th tale by Diane Setterfield and I really would love to get to this by her I know it follows a girl who's found on the banks of the Thames she's brought into this inn and she looks to be dead she looks to have drowned however she ends up somehow coming back to life and it just creates a whirlwind in the area where she's found as people wonder where she came from and how she got to where she was and people begin to claim their relationships with her and nobody really knows what her past consists of and I really liked Diane Setterfield's writing so I'm excited to read this. And last, just to throw a little variety into this mix, I have a YA fantasy standalone and that is is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a retelling or backstory of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland and I've heard good things about it. I haven't heard necessarily amazing things but most people who have read Alice in Wonderland and like it said that this was a good representation, had a good atmosphere that was similar to Alice. So I feel like I can trust it and it might just be nice to pick this up in the midst of me studying for all my papers, just something a little more lighthearted and sweet. So hopefully I can get to it eventually. I've never read anything by Marissa Meyer though I've always wanted to. So we'll see if I'm able to get to this. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below some things you're excited to pick up as well as if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them as I would love to know and I will see you next time. Bye!